Chapter 13, ICMP, ICMP Messages, ICMP version 4, and ICMP version 6 messages. Internet Control Messaging Protocol, ICMP, provides feedback about issues related to the processing of an IP packet under certain conditions. ICMP version 4 is the messaging protocol for IPv4. ICMP version 6, you guessed it is the messaging protocol for IPv6 and includes additional functionality. The ICMP messages common to both ICMP version 4 and ICMP version 6 include host reachability, destination or service unreachable, and time exceeded. Note, ICMP version 4 messages are not required and are often not allowed within a network for security reasons. So one big thing to remember is that with ICMP version 6, not only did they duplicate the functionality from ICMP version 4, but they also added functionality. So IPv6 uses ICMP for lots of other stuff. ICMP echo messages can be used to test the reachability of a host on an IP network. In the example, the local host sends an ICMP echo request to a host. If the host is available, the destination host responds with an echo reply. So basically, H1 is going to go through the network with a ping command. We'll cover that in a little bit. And then H2 receives that ping and then responds with a echo reply. And then the echo reply goes back to H1 with a, yep, I'm here. Now that can be thwarted by using, you know, any sort of firewall. So that could be just your basic Windows Defender, or it could be a network firewall. Destination or service unreachable. An ICMP destination unreachable message can be used to notify the source that the destination or service is unreachable. The ICMP message will include a code indicating why the packet could not be delivered. A few destination unreachable codes for ICMP version 4 are as follows. 0, net unreachable. 1, host unreachable. 2, protocol unreachable. And 3, port unreachable. A few destination unreachable codes for IPv6 are as follows. 0, no route to destination. 1, Communication with a destination is administratively prohibited. Example is a firewall. Two, beyond scope of the source address. Three, address unreachable. And four, port unreachable. Note, ICMP version 6 has similar but slightly different codes for destination unreachable messages. Now, one cool thing with IPv6 is this. That's pretty cool that they can tell you that there's something in between you and the destination that's blocking your ICMP traffic from going across. That's pretty cool. Time exceeded. When the time to live field in a packet is decremented to zero, an ICMP version 4 time exceeded message will be sent to the source host. ICMP version 6 also sends a time exceeded message. Instead of the IPv4 time to live field, ICMP version 6 uses the IPv6 hop limit field to determine if the packet has expired. Note, time exceeded messages are used by the traceroute tool. All this says is that with IPv4 you have a time to live field, and then if you remember, in IPv6 they renamed it to be hop limit field. Same thing, the same functionality, just a different name. Then here you can tell that they're running ping, because it says ping right there. It looks like they lost all four pings and they're trying to ping Google DNS. And then lastly, Traceroute. If you have not used it before, it's a fantastic tool. Traceroute basically will send a ping to every single hop along the path and then report to you where you stop getting communications at. It's fantastic. I think in Windows it's Tracert. So it'd be a uh, Trace RT. 
And of course, you can't really read my spelling, which is why I work with computers. ICMP version 6 messages. ICMP version 6 has new features and improved functionality not found in ICMP version 4, including four new protocols as part of the Neighbor Discovery Protocol, ND or NDP. Messaging between an IPv6 router and an IPv6 device, including dynamic address allocation, are as follows. Router solicitation messages and router advertisement messages. Messaging between IPv6 devices, including duplicate address detection and address resolution, are as follows. Neighbor solicitation and neighbor advertisement. ICMP v6 Neighbor Discovery also includes the redirect message, which has a similar function to the redirect messages used in ICMP version 4. So it's pretty cool to use ICMP for these new types of communications. Pretty awesome. Router advertisement messages are sent by IPv6 enabled routers every 200 seconds provide addressing information to IPv6 enabled hosts. A router advertisement message can include addressing information for the host, such as the prefix, prefix length, DNS address, and domain name. A host using stateless address auto configuration, Slack, will set its default gateway to the link local address of the router that sent the RA. So every 200 seconds, the router will send out a router advertisement saying, hey, I am your router. Here is the network information for this network. And then a computer, let's say it's a brand new computer, gets plugged in, turned on. At the very most, if everything else fails, you'll have to wait 200 seconds before you get the network information. But the computer will most likely ask the router first off, you know, who's the router, send me your information, and the router will respond. So this is here, so that way, if you need to change the information, let's say you added a new DNS server or you change the domain name, in 200 seconds, everything will have that new information. Pretty awesome. Or if you plug it in a device and for whatever reason, it doesn't work right, it doesn't go out and try to discover the router by itself, the router will advertise itself within 200 seconds. Pretty cool. An IPv6 enabled router will also send out an RA message in response to an RS message. In the figure, PC1 sends an RS message to determine how to receive its IPv6 address information dynamically. R1 replies to the router solicitation with an RA message. PC1 sends an RS message, hi, I just booted up. Is there an IPv6 router on the network? I need to know how to get my IPv6 address information dynamically. R1 replies with an RA message. Hi, all IPv6 enabled devices. I'm R1, and you can use Slack to curate an IPv6 global unicast address. The prefix is, and there's the prefix. By the way, use my link local address of fe80 colon colon 1 as your default gateway. So it's kind of a boring conversation, but you see how it works. A computer will send a router solicitation as soon as it boots up and it needs the network information. The router will send out a router advertisement message to everyone with the network information that they need. And everyone that receives that RA message will go through and make sure that everything is correct. You know, they'll also process it to make sure there hasn't been a change, that the prefix has not changed, the default gateway has not changed, that the you know any other Network information has not changed. A device assigned a global IPv6 unicast or link local unicast address may perform duplicate address detection, DAD, to ensure that the IPv6 address is unique. To check the uniqueness of an address, the device will send an NS message, neighbor solicitation, with its own IPv6 address as the targeted IPv6 address. If another device on the network has this address, it will respond with an NA, neighbor advertisement, message notifying to the sending device that the address is in use. 
So basically a computer will come up with its IP address and then it'll send out a neighbor solicitation message saying, who owns this IP address? Answer me. If it receives no response, then it knows that no one else is using the IP address and safe to use. But if it does get a response with a neighbor advertisement, then the computer knows that this IP address is already in use. I cannot use it. I will generate a new IP address. So duplicate address detection is an easy way to make sure that there's not going to be any IP conflict on your network, which is fantastic. To determine the MAC address for the destination, the device will send an NS message to the solicited node address. The message will include the known targeted IPv6 address. The device that has the targeted IPv6 address will respond with an NA message containing its Ethernet MAC address. In the figure, R1 sends an NS message to the IP address listed there, the 2001DB8, asking for its MAC address. So you can see the router sends a neighbor solicitation message, and then the computer responds with a neighbor advertisement message with its MAC address, the same way that ARP works in IPv4. But everything was used with either a unicast address or multicast addresses. So no broadcasts involved. Ping and traceroute tests. The ping command is an IPv4 and end IPv6 testing utility that uses ICMP echo requests and echo reply messages to test connectivity between hosts and provides a summary that includes the success rate and average round trip time to the destination. If a reply is not received within the timeout, Ping provides a message indicating that a response was not received. It is common for the first ping to time out if the address resolution, ARP, or neighbor discovery needs to be performed before sending the ICMP echo request. So this right here just showing you that you lose a ping, but then you get the last four pings. That is because this is the first time you try to contact that device. This right here, we get all five. That means that you've contacted that device before you know exactly where they are. Ping is very useful. If you have not used it very much, then you need to practice with it. If you're going to do anything with the network, these two ways, with ICMP version 4 and 6, they are so, so helpful. Uh, make sure you know how to use Ping. Ping the loopback. Ping can be used to test the internal configuration of IPv4 or IPv6 on the local host. To do this, ping the local loopback address of 127.001 for IPv4 or colon colon 1 for IPv6. A response from 127.0.0.1 or colon colon 1 for IPv6 indicates the IP is properly installed on the host. An error message indicates that TCP IP is not operational on the host. So when you ping your local host, you're just making sure that your TCP IP stack works. Ping the default gateway. The ping command can be used to test the ability of a host to communicate on the local network. The default gateway address is most often used because the router is normally always operational. A successful ping to the default gateway indicates that the host and the router interface serving as the default gateway are both operational on the network. If the default gateway address does not respond, a ping can be sent to the IP address of another host on the local network that is known to be operational. So troubleshooting 101. You ping your default gateway first to make sure that you can leave your network. If you cannot ping your default gateway, then you have to troubleshoot everything between your host and the default gateway. That could be you know, any number of switches, that could be lots of you know, layer two stuff, you know, VLANs and port configurations, stuff like that. If you can ping your default gateway, but you cannot ping beyond your default gateway, then it becomes a routing issue. So whenever you're trying to troubleshoot why I cannot reach the destination, you start off by pinging your default gateway and then going up from there. As soon as you know that you can ping your default gateway and you know that your local network is good to go, is configured correctly, then you can move on to troubleshooting the bigger issues which are routing. 
ping a remote host. Ping can also be used to test the ability of a local host to communicate across a internetwork. A local host can ping a host on a remote network. A successful ping across the internetwork confirms communication on the local network. Note, many network administrators limit or prohibit the entry of ICMP messages, therefore, the lack of a ping response could be due to security restrictions. If it is not your network and you're trying to ping into it, good luck. Cloud hosting services also do not allow you to ping inside of their network. But if you're trying to do labs and you're trying to ping across to a remote network between routers, then it should work. Traceroute. Test the path. Traceroute, tracer in Windows, is a utility that is used to test the path between two hosts and provide a list of hops that were successfully reached along the path. Traceroute provides round trip time for each hop along the path and indicates if a hop failed to respond. An asterisk is used to indicate a lost or unreplied packet. This information can be used to locate a problematic router in the pathway or may indicate that the router is configured not to reply. Note. Traceroute makes use of a function of the TTL field in IPv4 and the hop limit field in IPv6 in the layer 3 headers, along with the ICMP time exceeded message. So Traceroute is fantastic. I've used it heavily, and it's definitely a tool that you want to use. You basically can find out where your ping fails. Now, just because your ping fails at this point does not mean that it's because of the network. It could just mean that there's a firewall that's blocking a reply to you. But I've used the uh, Traceroute heavily, and it's definitely a networking tool that you want to get familiar with because it can save you lots of time and help you narrow down your troubleshooting on your own network. The first message sent from Traceroute will have a TTL field value of 1. This causes the TTL to time out at the first router. This router then responds with an ICMP version 4 time exceeded message. Traceroute will then progressively increment the TTL field 2, 3, 4 for each sequence of messages. This provides a trace with an address of each hop as the packets time out further down the line. The TTL field continues to be increased until the destination is reached or it is incremented to a predefined maximum. So here's an example. You're trying to get from here as your source to a destination here. So what it does is that you'll have the TTL of 1. It'll time out right on this router, the very first router, then respond back. The next packet will be a TTL of 2. Then this router will, will respond back. Then, of course, TTL of 3, then a TTL of 4, which is your final destination. And so each layer through device along the path will respond back. Then, of course, if you have you know, more routers in there, then your TTLs will keep going up, you know, 5, 6, 7, 8 times all the way up until it's a predefined maximum. One thing to note is that just because your trace route failed at one point, doesn't mean that the next router will fail. So for example, you can come across situations where let's just say that router two was configured so that way it will not respond to a trace route. No pings, no, nothing to do with ICMP. So you'll get a failure at router two, but then router three will, will respond. That lets you know that you can still make it to the path, you can make it through the path, but this one device is just configured by the administrator not to respond to ICMP. Here are the new terms and commands. That is it for chapter 13.